Hey everyone, this past week was a curious one for Joe Biden, eventually culminating in an infrastructure bill being passed. Fantastic news if you're one of the many politicians whose family and friends are in the construction business. It's seemingly easy to waste obscene amounts of money when you call it, quote, investing in the future, rather than, quote, being ripped off left, right and centre. And let's not kid ourselves, this waste is on the right as well as the political left. Anyway, after all the other events of the prior week, this spending bill seemed like the political equivalent of someone having a very bad week at work and then spending all weekend in the pub, burning through their wages. For several weeks, Biden has been torn apart by most sections of the media with his approval ratings falling faster than a drunk on a unicycle. Much of this public anger showed itself in the elections in New Jersey and Virginia this last week. These are states where Mr Biden won by 10 points last election, yet this time lost. In one instance, a New Jersey senator who had been in the job for decades lost to a former trucker who apparently only spent 153 bucks in the campaign, which given a shortage of truckers means it was probably about an hour's wages or something. He was in New Jersey though, so working in politics or quote transportation are essentially the same thing. You do what Tony Soprano tells you to. $153 though it is still a remarkably small amount of money to spend given the skyrocketing cost of living. Petrol prices have doubled in the past 18 months and maybe that explains why so many more New York rats are taking to public transit. Or maybe that's just due to more left-wing mismanagement with the city laying off thousands of unvaccinated sanitation workers and other key jobs like the police, firemen and health workers before blaming anyone from Donald Trump to Dick Dastardly but definitely not themselves. The largest swing factor in these elections was undoubtedly education. The incumbent Virginia governor made an electoral pledge to guarantee that no parent would ever be given a say in its school's curriculum. I don't think that's gone out on a limb to suggest that teachers accusing five-year-olds of being systemically racist and then telling the parents that they would be arrested if they disagreed was ever going to be playing out well as a vote winner. That literally happened by the way, a parent in Virginia was arrested for transphobia after his daughter was assaulted in a school toilet by a boy in a dress who later admitted he wasn't transgender after all. This is the ultra-woke school philosophy where people think that for instance the historian Guy Chapman should have changed his name to Person Person Person. Guy Chapman? Never mind. It's quite a crazy world we live in where there are politicians literally trying to reintroduce segregation and the idea of separate but equal, and yet the people that oppose that are the ones being accused of being crazy racists. It's all upside down. Next thing you know, Abu Hamza will be opening up a Weatherspoons, or perhaps Yoko Ono will do a recruitment video for the army. So where was the president when all this was going on? Well, in Scotland, attending the climate conference where he proceeded to fall asleep in camera. You'd have to wonder how the BBC would have covered that story if Donald Trump had done it. The internet would have caught fire and everyone would call for his resignation. But it's Joe Biden, so he gets a free pass, whether it's that or the time that he thought he was still a senator, or every time he forgets people's names, including his own give it another year probably. The summit itself was of course a complete waste of time for everybody apart from maybe the bloke that has a deal to sell jet fuel to Glasgow Airport. The stories about how the catering ran out and it was so bad anyway that leaders from the third world complained. Emmanuel Macron actually left several days early, although it's unclear whether that was due to his gastronomic taste or just because he was fed up with the UK and Australia laughing at him over the submarine deal. My favourite story from the whole fiasco was the one about protesters demanding the cancellation of a new coal mine in Cumbria, insisting that the government should build wind farms instead, all completely oblivious to the fact that the project was going to be producing coking coal, which isn't even used in energy production any more than tofu is used in my kitchen. Wind turbine manufacturing includes steel and therefore you literally can't build wind turbines without coking coal. Did any journalist question it or ask if any of the protesters actually understood mining or manufacturing? Well, that was always going to be about as likely as the Chinese showing up. In the meantime, I'm going to use the conference as an inspiration to lose three stone but I'm going to give myself an arbitrary deadline of 2050 and any changes to my diet don't have to include Chinese or Indian. Anyway, see you next week. If you like these, click subscribe.